Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK 1230 AM. We are opening minds living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 AM. Make sure you tune in. But if you ever do miss a show, do know that we are live right now on Facebook. We are live right now on Facebook at TGL Radio Show, at TGL Radio Show. You can find us, The Good Life Radio Show. Make sure you follow us. We are almost up to 17,000 followers on our radio page. So please make sure that you join the movement. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding. And we do that right here weekdays. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms. That is at TGL Radio Show, at TGL Radio Show, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter Instagram Facebook and Twitter we have a very special show for you today we have been discussing labeling all week labeling all week with regard to our community we touched a little bit we had uh, we reeled Chuck Perkins into our show and so we talked a little bit about personal responsibility and individualism we talked about how that is a fine line but we want to make sure that when we do start taking care of ourselves and heal ourselves from within how that does trickle it is not only caring about yourself we don't want to you know go over that hill but we want to start that love compassion tolerance and understanding understanding for ourselves so then we can begin to show it it's a domino effect and we can really change the world and that's what the good life is all about that's what we want to do we've talked about it on relationship tuesday we had henry jolly who was in the studio he was here and we talked about labeling um we found this article and it was talking about how men only want this label on a woman and you know it was nice. It was, it was not the label that most of us thought, but it was the label of nice. And we talked about how the label of nice can sometimes be misconstrued. Sometimes when they talk about it for a woman, they think that you're weak or subservient. Or with a man, nice means soft and, you know, not a, a take charge. But how we want to change the, that wording and really um, improve that label because we just want people to be nice. Be nice to yourself. Be nice to one another. And we want to live the good life as well. And then yesterday with Wellness Wednesday, labeling, we wanted to make Make sure, you know, stop labeling uh, workouts and, and different types of exercises, saying I'll never do that. It's something, it's usually the thing that you say you're never going to do is the thing that you end up absolutely loving. So we want to talk about that and opening your mind and reading your labels with regard to your health. Don't just read the front of the label because they can write anything that they want there. You want to make sure that you turn that around and read your nutri- nutrition facts. Read those labels and actually read the ingredients because that's where you're going to find your real information. And so here, we are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday. Uh, we're going to have, uh, I think, uh, Randy Chambliss is, is coming in, but he has an event that is coming up on May 24th. That is May 24th. And we want to make sure each and every one of you are there, or if you're not there, that you know about it, that you send somebody. Because this is a label we want to make sure more people in our community have, and that is of homeowner the label of homeowner it is community real estate investing finance and 750 plus credit strategy session yes it is a credit strategy session if you have been struggling with your credit you need a little bit more information or it's not something that um you necessarily you know just know about but you really do want to turn the page and get more information because you know you want to take that that turn oh cindy is walking in the studio and we have terry on the line good morning Good morning, ladies. How are you? Good, Good morning. morning, Eileen. How are you? Girls, ladies, it's I am so morning. excited to have you here this morning. Yes, we're going to have an interesting conversation. Oh, For those of you who heard me a little bit this morning on uh, Small Business Thursday, uh, we're going to get into the labeling of you know our community and a little bit of uh, these statues right after this break. But before we go into that, we were discussing... Uh, the labels of home ownership. You know, that's a label that a lot of people want to enjoy, and we want to build our community by having more people invest in that label. And we have um, we have a brand new sponsor, so I want to thank uh, Nola Homes Project, and you can find them online, nolahomesproject.com, nolahomesproject.com. We want you to come out and learn from our local real estate experts. They will also be here on Marketplace Monday to give more information on the event and 
exactly what they do, but it is a community real estate investing finance and 750 plus credit credit strategy session. And we know Get ladies, out of here. exactly. We know how, you know, changing your credit can really change your lives. Oh yeah. Because you pay more when your credit is lower. Unfortunately, it just, you know, it's how the system kind of gets you in All a right. cycle. And we want to make sure we break out of that cycle and that we can tr- we can change the labels that are placed upon us. And I think with that, it's creating opportunities. Yes! Right? Absolutely. So when you improve your credit, I mean, a wealth of opportunities come and you can take advantage of it. Oh, I'm not a big renter. I, You know, when I first moved back to New Orleans, Sean and I didn't even rent a, a, an apartment we decided to stay with my parents to save because, Hello. because yes. we were really working toward ownership in which we've been very blessed to have that ability, and we've been homeowners for the past 18 years since I've been home. Wow. Yeah, I bought my first home probably about 11 months after I moved back to New Orleans. How important was it for you to be able to say you were a homeowner? Extreme. It was like our top priority, and wow. I think for us to, even at that time, we only had Serena, but for our kids to have a sense of ownership, that mm-hmm. this is their home. Mm-hmm. And so we, I mean, believe me, we cut corners, save. But you know, let me tell you, for people that are listening, that are renters, it's going to pay off. Mm-hmm. Just having your own place. And I'm raising my hand because I've been a renter, but I'm, I'm, like you said, I'm in the market and I'm, I'm moving. Correct. I've been a single mom. I was like, I can't, no, it's so much yeah. easier. But in the long run, yeah. I, you know, right. I, I want this label as well. Yeah, because you keep a, a same address. For li- literally for life, <laughs> right. right? And you can pass it on. Exactly. And so, uh, but yeah, I'm so excited about that segment. And yes. And so, y'all, NOLA Homes Project is putting this on. It is two. It is Tuesday, May 23rd. Tuesday, May 23rd. That's next week. From next week. Yes. From 6:30 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. 6:30 p.m. to 8:30 p.m. You can go on and register at myrealestatetrainingpro.com. That is my real estate trainingpro.com myrealestatetrainingpro.com and guess what it's free did you hear me omg free how many times you going to get free information like this oh my god terry does that ever happen no <laughs> he she said no never and it, and Cindy, you will love this. It is at the Wyndham Garden, New Orleans East. Yay! Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, my gosh! Oh, my God! I'm so excited! I was saving that for oh. you. Yes. So it is at the Wyndham Garden, New Orleans East, and that is Tuesday, May 23rd, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. They put it in reasonable hours to make sure that people who are working could get there. And even yes. if you can't get there, please go on to MyRealEstateTrainingPro.com, MyRealEstateTrainingPro.com. You can get information and and it's free y'all free did i say free yes it is and free. it's happening in the east and it's happening in the east <laughs> and it is being hosted by nola homes project nola homes project Thank and you, you can nola go homes. yes and Thank you can go you, online there and get information as as well and included with that it's not just about you know home ownership but it's also about people who want to do real estate investing so we were talking mm. about earlier on small business thursday how in new orleans you generally not you generally you need a job and a side hustle Oh, <laughs> you're laughing, but Terry. Kind of like a sugar daddy. Like, right, right. <laughs> you need a job and a side hustle to be able to afford, you know, the extra to live. The yeah, extras. exactly. And so, you know, some people side hustle is real estate investing, and it can nothing can really, wrong with that. No, at all. absolutely. Nothing. So this information is going to raise your knowledge and hopefully lead you to the good life and generational wealth. That's what we want: generational wealth. So it's community real estate investing. And it's also finance. There's so many times where we know what we know, but that may be, you know, the budgeting and the finance and the money and the, all that. Like, you're like, oh, I'm just a little confused or I, just, mm-hmm. I need a little bit of help. Correct. Well, they're going to give you credit strategies to be able to raise your credit and to be able to keep it up there. Because sometimes, you know, you open accounts or you close accounts that actually were helping you keep your credit score up there. Mm-hmm. So they're going to educate us on that. And this is NOLA Homes Project. They're putting on this event on Tuesday, May 23rd from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m., 8.30 p.m., Tuesday, May 23rd, and that is the Wyndham Garden, New Orleans East. And you can register online at MyRealEstateTrainingPro.com, MyRealEstateTrainingPro.com. Terry, Cindy, how did it feel when you, like, had the keys to, like, your first house? Or look, look at her face. How, how did it feel? It felt extreme. I mean, my I love my parents, but just having my <laughs> own place. But I didn't want to share And let anymore. me tell you, I, I remember that day, it was December the 14th, 
Um, and we, Sean and I barely, we had probably like maybe chopsticks. Mm-hmm. But it was just a sense <laughs> of we could do whatever we right. want to do. <laughs> right. And that, it's you know, mine. Yeah, exactly. And it was just a great feeling. And we still enjoy our home tremendously. So, uh, but it's such, and I hope that for renters and, you know, out there to have that opportunity. Or even if you want to grow, right. In Correct, fact, exactly. Like said, so this, this workshop is also for homeowners that want yes. to venture into some other business ventures, right? Exactly, because sometimes you're a homeowner and you're like, I want to, you know, create. Grow. I want to grow, and I want to create, you know, multiple streams of income, and I uh-huh. want to purchase and invest. And sometimes that's a little bit different than just, you know, your first home yeah. buying experience. And, you know, I guess now it's like we're in graduation mode right now. Right. And we're telling our graduates, right, mm-hmm. the future is there. Grow. Open your mind. Yes. And so it's so fitting in, in, in the season that we're in right now because I've been to Buku of graduation. <laughs> yes, I've been week. following you. I've been looking at all of them. I have so many students. Your daughter, uh, your nephew. nephew. And I have students that are graduating that I got invited to. So it's like this weekend, Buku of graduation parties and stuff like that. But just in that sense of that spirit of mm-hmm. graduation. And this workshop is perfect timing. And it's in the East. Correct. Did y'all hear it's that? In the we are east. supporting our and east. And it's a gorgeous hotel. It so is. if you have not been able to visit the Wyndham Garden Hotel in the east. Aren't you having there something soon? I had it last week, oh, okay. last Friday. But I'm have another I'm actually meeting with them Monday to set up some future events. See? In the see? east. So Terry, how was it for you when you purchased your first home? Oh, it was fantastic. We built our first home. And, Did you? Um, mm-hmm. Yes, we built our first home and uh that was a blessing because we had, um, you know, building it, just getting the loan was the best part, you know, to uh, build it. Well, we kind of did ours in two phases because first we purchased a lot mm-hmm. and then we paid a lot off, you know, or most of it off and borrowed to build. But walking into my home for the first time, that was the best ever. When the when the contractor turned the keys over. Mm. Like it's yours. And, mm. and sleeping in our home, you know, for the first time, our, our home, it was fantastic. I mean... I can't, I can't, you know, I imagine, You're I can't, I can't imagine how, uh, you know, people just don't want that feeling, you know, that just walk in your home and, you know, go for it, strive for it, because it is something you pay taxes on, you can get tax breaks on, it's yours, yes. it's, mm. it's something you can leave behind, it's, you know, for your, for your kids, Shared. you know. Yeah. Um, but it is something that you own. I mean, you get up and you go to work and you work hard every day. Mm-hmm. Don't give your money to somebody else. That's right. right. Oh my you know, God. Yeah. <laughs> invest in invest in you in by doing the, this. Yes. And, um, Amen to that. We want to yes. make we want to make sure everyone invest in themselves. So next week, May twenty third. That is Tuesday, May twenty third, from six thirty p.m. to eight thirty p.m. Community real estate investing, finance, and 700 plus credit strategy sessions. No matter what your credit looks like today, we are giving you the information to grow. We want to increase that credit score, even if it's by one point mm-hmm. at a time. Yeah. The time is going to pass anyway, so you might as well get the information to have it grow. It's, it's going to pass anyway. I'm planning to attend. You, there, I'm a homeowner already, but I want to bring Serena with me. There you go. Right. And even if it's bringing your children, exactly Correct. what you said. Absolutely. It, right. This is a perfect chance for you to bring a free your class. young adults. A free, and it's free, which doesn't happen too often. It does not happen too often. So it is free. It is produced by NOLA Homes Project. And they will also be here on Marketplace Monday. So if you're hearing this information and you want to make sure that you get some more, tune in to Marketplace Monday. That is this Monday at 11 a.m. They will be here for the second segment. That is from 11 to 1135. Make sure that you tune in there as well. Um, Randy Chambliss will be here, but NOLA Homes Project is putting on community real estate investing, finance, and 750 plus credit strategy session. I'm so excited. I can't get out of my mouth. Can't even talk. Can't credit. It's going to go so, can, you, can you imagine <laughs> every, if everybody in our community had 750 plus oh. credit or up? Number one, we'd have more money in my pocket. Correct. Yeah, we would all be right. living the good life. Exactly. Right. 
because you, sure. get, you get stuck in that rat race. And, you know, a lot of people fall into shame. And I was actually reading, you know, on Facebook, they, there was a, uh, an, a uh, excuse me, a, a post about that. It was about this young man who was helping a friend get out of that. And she was like, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I was just ashamed. He's like, why are you ashamed? He's like, you know, I had a very low credit score. And she was like, you, everybody has had an up and down time in mm-hmm. their life. And it is nothing yeah. to be yep. ashamed of. That's right. But yeah. it's when you want to stay there. Oh, and this right. is an opportunity that is free to give you the information to make your dreams come true. So make sure you are there Tuesday, May 23rd from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. NOLA Homes Project is putting on community real estate investing, finance, and 700 700- 50 plus credits chat strategy session and it is at the Wyndham Garden New Orleans East. Yay, Cindy for New Orleans. I know, yay. I'm like Wyndham, excited. <laughs> the Wyndham Garden New Orleans East. Make sure you are there Tuesday, May 23rd. Why? Because it's a good life. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, I'm going to be talking about another label. There's a segment that I'm starting. Um, I didn't know I was going to start it today. But it's a segment that I wanted to start in a couple of weeks. But sometimes, you know, God just puts something in your heart yep. and, and it's just time. So, uh, like, we have a Heal NOLA project, you know, Heal Our City. So, mm-hmm. Heal NOLA project. So, it's a conversation that I want to have. Um, mm. Watching and reading all of the comments regarding the statues has uh, just put something on my yeah. heart. And so, I want to share it with each and every one of you. So, it's a good life, y'all. Please stay tuned. We're going to heal this city together. We'll be right back. businesses play an important role in society and LNR Security is no different. LNR Security delivers safety and comfort to our neighborhoods, events, apartment communities, conventions, work sites, festivals, and your business. LNR Security can be reached at 504-943-3191 to ensure the safety of your employees, customers, family, friends, and you. LNR Security has made its mark in the security arena for over 37 years and will faithfully continue that tradition. Call today for your personalized consultation to ensure your security needs are met. LNR Security differentiates itself by creating partnerships with our clients and guards. We are now hiring armed and unarmed guard professionals, retired military, sheriffs, and PD to grow with us and impact our community. Be a part of the change with LNR Security. Call us now at 504-943-3191. Are you looking for a roadmap to get out of the financial rat race? If so, go to MyFinancialTrainingPro.com to register for NOLA Homes Project's free income shifting strategy session. The world has more to offer you than just a job and a paycheck. Our experts will show you how to raise your credit scores, minimize your taxes and expenses, while investing in real estate to put more cash in your pocket each and every month. Seating is limited, so do not wait. Visit MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. That's MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. Isagenics is one of the fastest growing companies in the world because their products work. Their solutions and culture has redefined the health and wellness industry. Science backs their products and statistics back their success. But it's the people who make them successful. And I, Eileen Carter, have joined the Isagenics revolution. I've used the products and followed their system, and I swear by them. I'm on my journey of transformation and invite you to join Join me and try Isagenix today. Challenge yourself and change your life. Find information and testimonials at thegoodliferadioshow.isagenix.com. 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 Order yours today. Control of rats, mice, and commercial vertebrate pests requires much more than setting traps and placing poison bait in a desired area. Unless you eliminate food, water, and harborage, after blockage and structural exclusion, your problem will return. At Rodent Guard Pest Control, we are trained to change the environment of the rodent. 
Call 504-952-7378. We have earned our name by reducing the rodent population and eliminating harborage opportunities. We have programs for preventive maintenance and provide rodent assessments. Rodent Guard, 504-952-7378. Licensed to exterminate. For WBOK listeners, we offer a discount opportunity if you mention promo code 952-PEST. Join Metropolitan Human Services District and Xavier University as they tackle an important panel discussion entitled Hashtag Get Your Mind Right, a collegiate mental health conversation. It all happens at the Xavier University Center, room 205 on Wednesday, May 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. Get informed during Mental Health Awareness Month. It's Hashtag Get Your Mind Right. We'll see you May 24th at the Xavier University Center with Metropolitan Human Services District. Hi, this is Mark Morial, and I'm living the good life with Eileen Carter. Tune in to the Good Life Radio Show weekdays from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. so you can live the good life, too. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 a.m. We are also live on Facebook, so make sure all of you in the listening audience help us get our numbers up. Follow us on Facebook. Just hit the little button. Every time that we go live, you'll get a notification. And even if you miss a show, you can go back and watch it. I actually have a lot of people who watch it, you know, when they're working out because it's an hour, so it's, like, perfect while you're on, like, the treadmill or jogging in the park or walking or whatever it may be for you. But if you fall and trip, listen to us, it's not our fault. It is not, not our, our fault. fault. It is absolutely not our right. fault. So we want to open your mind to living differently in the world with that. But, oh, and let me, oh, I am here with Cindy Wynn, my co-host, and Terry Guerin. Good morning, Terry's on the line. Good morning, ladies. How are you? I am so Taking glad. Yes, I am so glad that I have you here for this conversation because, honestly, I didn't know how I was going to converse, how I was going to have the conversation or if it was going to come up. But um, we've been discussing labels this week. And so mm-hmm. this isn't really going to come up the way that you think it's going to come up. Because cognitive dissidence is something that I talk about all the time. And co- cognitive dissidence, um, I'm going straight for the de- definitions, a term used to describe the feelings of discomfort that we have when you're holding conflicting beliefs. Mm-hmm. Per se, when you believe in something, but what you're doing doesn't necessarily meet that. And when you're, uh, when you're, it's like you're, you are, it's basically put in your face that it's not right. And it's like that feeling of discomfort. And you're like, that's what I've been having. Ah, yes, but it's like, but I believe this so long, Correct. but maybe it's not true. And it's really, really uncomfortable. So with that being said, we all know in New Orleans and actually the nation, because we've made a national news mm-hmm. about the statues coming down. And I right. talk about the good life all the time and opening your mind. So honestly, I went underneath the comment section for a lot of our local news Mm -hmm. to read. I wanted to hear other people's point of view Mm -hmm. because, like I said um, before, people are connected to these issues. So I want to understand what their connection was so I could at least understand their perspective. I may not agree with it, but I can understand them. I can respectfully disagree. So I went on there with an open mind Mm -hmm. because we're starting this – this uh, segment called Heal NOLA, the Heal NOLA project. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I wanted it to be about. I didn't know when it, but, you know, this just happens to be our first segment. So ladies, welcome. The Heal NOLA project. Uh, So I went on there, and I cannot tell you, like, I literally... I don't know. I, I, I am obviously an empath because I was I was feeling it like the hatred in people's comments Mm. made me so sad, like. 
these are your neighbors who are walking next to you every day. And, you know, it, it's good that you're able to, like, see and really understand. But I'm going to be honest, and I'm not going to give any names here, but I was I was reading comments from people that, for, for you who don't know, I worked for the Louisiana Minority Supplier Development Council for two years. And that council handles the MBE uh, mm-hmm. certification. It's now the Southern Regional, but at that point it was the Louisiana Minority Development Council. And it is so that our corporates can basically count their spin on minority-based mm-hmm. businesses. And it's not just, it's all people of color, mm-hmm. uh, Native American to Pacific Islander, it's every, okay. every color. So it encompasses, you know, many different um, ethnicities, cultures, and backgrounds, and things of that sort. So with that being said, I've, I've gotten to have relationships with a lot of people, but there were people that I worked with who are holding an MBE certification who were put, posting about how they were mourning the statues. Oh, wow, really? I'm like, mourning. I mourning mean, tears statues. went and take pictures and went and were like, mourning. I'm like, mourning. you hold an MBE certification. Mm-hmm. Do you even know why the MBE certification was created? Correct. And that's like a whole nother show, but I'm sure y'all can get as to why I'm going into that. But I'm like, the cognitive wow. dissonance mm-hmm. that people are experiencing the discomfort of letting something go when they have misinformation. Because I'm reading a lot of the comments, and so a lot of the comments were about it's our history, it's about civil rights, and and it's not civil rights, it's about uh, states' rights, and this and that and the other. So I was like, you know, well, let's go get the real history. So I have this... This it's a five minute explanation. It is Colonel Ty. Uh, I hope I sp- I'm pronouncing his name right. Colonel Ty Sidul. He is a history professor at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point, and okay. he is going to settle the debate once and for all. Now mm. I will say this: you're going to hear his explanation of what caused the Civil War. Whether you think it's about states' rights, whether you think it's about slavery, economics, this man is a history professor from the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. I don't, I can't give you a better person to give an explanation of the Civil War. And this right. is, you know, truth, be, it, it's it's not biased. It's not a, from a person of color. It's not from, you know, this side who is, is raising the Confederate flag. But I wanted to give somebody who had an independent explanation of what the Civil War was about. So when you say, it is my history and I'm so proud of it, I want each and every one of us to know exactly what that history is. So here we go. Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? More than 150 years later, this remains a controversial question. Why? Because many people don't want to believe that the citizens of the southern states were willing to fight and die to preserve a morally repugnant institution. There has to be another reason, we are told. Well, there isn't. The evidence is clear and overwhelming Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War, for both sides. Before the presidential election of 1860, a South Carolina newspaper warned that the issue before the country was the extinction of slavery, and called on all who were not prepared to surrender the institution to act. Shortly after Abraham Lincoln's victory, they did. The secession documents of every southern state made clear, crystal clear, that they were leaving the Union in order to protect their peculiar institution of slavery, a phrase that at the time meant the thing special to them. The vote to secede was 169 to 0 in South Carolina, 166 to 7 in Texas, 84 to 15 in Mississippi. In no southern state was the vote close. Alexander Stevens of Georgia, the Confederacy's vice president, clearly articulated the views of the South in March 1861. Our new government, he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. Yet despite the evidence Many continue to argue that other factors superseded slavery as the cause of the Civil War. Some argue that the South only wanted to protect states' rights. But this raises an obvious question. The states' rights to what? Wasn't it to maintain and spread slavery? 
Moreover, states' rights was not an exclusive Southern issue. All the states, North and South, sought to protect their rights. Sometimes they petitioned the federal government. Sometimes they quarreled with each other. In fact, Mississippians complained that New York had too strong a concept of states' rights because it would not allow Delta planters to bring their slaves to Manhattan. The South was preoccupied with states' rights because it was preoccupied first and foremost with retaining slavery. Some argue that the cause of the war was economic. The North was industrial and the South agrarian. And so the two lived in such economically different societies that they could no longer stay together. Not true. In the middle of the 19th century, both North and South were agrarian societies. In fact, the North produced far more food crops than did the South. But Northern farmers had to pay their farmhands, who were free to come and go as they pleased, while Southern plantation owners exploited slaves over whom they had total control. And it wasn't just plantation owners who supported slavery. The slave society was embraced by all classes in the South. The rich had multiple motivations for wanting to maintain slavery. But so did the poor, non-slaveholding whites. The peculiar institution ensured that they did not fall to the bottom rung of the social ladder. That's why another argument that the Civil War couldn't have been about slavery because so few people owned slaves has little merit. Finally, many have argued that President Abraham Lincoln fought the war to keep the Union together, not to end slavery. That was true at the outset of the war, but he did so with the clear knowledge that keeping the Union together meant either spreading slavery to all the states, an unacceptable solution, or vanquishing it altogether. In a famous campaign speech in 1858, Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. What was it that divided the country? It was slavery and only slavery. He continued, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. It will become all one thing or all the other. Lincoln's view never changed. And as the war progressed, the moral component, ending slavery, became more and more fixed in his mind. His Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 turned that into law. Slavery is the great shame of America's history. No one denies that. But it's to America's everlasting credit that it fought the most devastating war in its history in order to abolish slavery. As a soldier, I am proud that the United States Army, my army, defeated the Confederates. In its finest hour, soldiers wearing this blue uniform, almost 200,000 of them, former slaves themselves, destroyed chattel slavery, freed four million men, women, and children from human bondage, and saved the United States of America. I'm Colonel Ty Sigley, Professor and Head, Department of History at the United States Military Academy, West Point, for Prager University. Sometimes we need the facts. Right. Yep. Yes. This isn't you know, my personal two cents. This isn't someone else's personal two cents. We had a bill that came out of our House Mm -hmm. of Representatives Mm -hmm. that is now going to our Senate next week. So what can each one of us do? Well, for me, I can educate because I have this platform. So what I'm going to do is every day through Wednesday is I'm going to play this information because I for, I understand that information is key it opens your mind mm-hmm. and this man who's a colonel and a history professor from the US Military Academy of West Point if you're not going to believe me there are some people that said they wouldn't believe the truth unless you know Abraham Lincoln rose out of his grave and came and delivered the truth Well, that's not going to happen. So I figured the next best thing is a colonel from West Point who's a history history professor. And even if you don't want to believe him, then that's a personal struggle that you may have. Mm -hmm. But this, these are the facts, and I'm just going to lay them out. 
I, I, well, I'm not going to lay them out. He laid them out. Correct. And so I just want to open your mind to living differently in the world. And there was someone, and I'm going to open it up for conversation. There was someone on who put under the post that I put, uh, and this, and, and speaking of it, this, um, Video will is on now. It's on our WBOK page. It's on my personal page, Eileen Carter WBOK, and it is on the Good Life Radio Show page. So pick a page, any page. <laughs> please go share it. Information is key. When we educate each other, then we can understand. Because I wanted to know someone else's point of view, and that's how this all started. But there was this woman who had a post, and I was like, if this isn't perfect, and I'm going to say this, and then we're going to go into break, and so we're going to open the lines then, and I want to hear what Cindy and Terry have to say. Um, she was like, it's like having a monument of Hitler. Mm. For the Germans, during that time, there were many Germans who thought that it was a wonderful period. They lived, you know, in opulence. They were over so many people. And for them, it was a great time. But it was not a great time for the people that they were killing, enslaving, using as as test and just the gruesome, nasty things that they did to the Jewish culture. It's the same thing. These statues are equivalent to that time. Why do you think that it's okay? And there are people who are like, oh, well, it's just something that's coming up. It's not something this, that just came up. There had been a lull. You had The conversation has been ongoing. There was just a lull because they had pushed it to the side and kicked the can down the road. And has just come a time where you can't kick the can anymore and the statues are coming down. Mm -hmm. So you should know... Everybody who wants to embrace your history, exactly what you're embracing. And understand, at least if you don't agree, at least understand what someone else's perspective mm -hmm. is. It is slavery. That's exactly what these statues are emulating. Slavery. And that is not the good life. This is a segment. It's Heal NOLA Project. It is strictly to give you information. You know where I'm coming from. But hopefully you can at least understand where someone else who may not agree with you comes from. Sometimes we just need to listen to each other. And if you're not going to listen to me, listen to Colonel, um, a colonel from the U.S. Military Academy of West Point. Hopefully he settled that debate. And we will play it every day until it hits the Senate. This is uh, The Good Life, y'all. We'll be right back. Isagenics is one of the fastest growing companies in the world because their products work. Their solutions and culture has redefined the health and wellness industry. Science backs their products and statistics back their success. But it's the people who make them successful. And I, Eileen Carter, have joined the Isagenics revolution. I've used the products and followed their system, and I swear by them. I'm on my journey of transformation and invite you to join Join me and try Isagenics today. Challenge yourself and change your life. Find information and testimonials at thegoodliferadioshow.isagenics.com. Thegoodliferadioshow.isagenics.com. Thegoodliferadioshow.isagenix.com. Order yours today. Small businesses play an important role in society, and LNR Security is no different. LNR Security delivers safety and comfort to our neighborhoods, events, apartment communities, conventions, work sites, festivals, and your business. LNR Security can be reached at 504 943 3191 to ensure the safety of your employees, customers, family, friends, and you. LNR Security has made its mark in the security arena for over 37 years and will faithfully continue that tradition. Call today for your personalized consultation to ensure your security needs are met. LNR Security differentiates itself by creating partnerships with our clients and guards. We are now hiring armed and unarmed guard professionals, retired military, sheriffs, and PD to grow with us and impact our community. Be a part of the change with LNR Security. Call us now at 504-943-3191. 504-943-3191. Are you looking for a roadmap to get out of the financial rat race? If so, go to MyFinancialTrainingPro.com to register for NOLA Homes Project free income shifting strategy session. The world has more to offer you than just a job and a paycheck. Our experts will show you how to raise your credit scores, minimize your taxes and expenses, while investing in real estate to put more cash in your pocket each and every month. 
Seating is limited, so do not wait. Visit MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. That's MyFinancialTrainingPro.com. Come on, roll with RTA. You back for more information, and now there's more info at NORTA.com. You can plan your trip ahead of time or on your phone. You can text the stop number to see when the next bus is coming. You can follow New Orleans RTA on Facebook and Twitter. From New Orleans East to the Lower Nine, we got you covered. Dirt Town, Uptown, Downtown, to the Algiers Point, and all in between. Rolling for everybody, everywhere. That RTA keeps New Orleans rolling. Control of rats, mice, and commercial vertebrate pests requires much more than setting traps and placing poison bait in a desired area. Unless you eliminate food, water, and harborage, after blockage and structural exclusion, your problem will return. At Rodent Guard Pest Control, we are trained to change the environment of the rodent. Call 504-952-7378. We have earned our name by reducing the rodent population and eliminating harborage opportunities. We have programs for preventive maintenance and provide rodent assessments. Rodent Guard, 504-952-7378. License to exterminate. For WBOK listeners, we offer a discount opportunity if you mention promo code 952-PEST. Join Metropolitan Human Services District and Xavier University as they tackle an important panel discussion entitled Hashtag Get Your Mind Right, a collegiate mental health conversation. It all happens at the Xavier University Center, room 205 on Wednesday, May 24th from 6 to 8 p.m. Get informed during Mental Health Awareness Month. It's Hashtag Get Your Mind Right. We'll see you May 24th at the Xavier University Center with Metropolitan Human Services District. Awesomely amazing, the facts made clear. Data News Weekly, the paper to cheer. The people's paper for natural growth. Honorable achievers achieving the most. Data News Weekly, the future of our youth. In the city of New Orleans, without excuse. Understanding the expression, Black Lives Matter, yet we're failing to climb the ladder. The absence of love, the missing link. It's time we commit to effectively think, uplifting our women, families as well. Safer communities in order to excel. Managing anger, developing our minds. Data News Weekly, preventing decline. Restoring our decency, restoring our faith, thoroughly conscious, removing disgrace, the best of character constantly applied, self-determination no one denied, mothering children, mothers up to par, the purpose of life beyond a star. So let us prioritize what is urgently needed. Data News Weekly, regression defeated, no longer distracted, no longer confused, so great is the substance of Data News. Pick up your copy of Data News Weekly today. What's up, y'all? You already know it's Greg Tillery, the owner of We That Chicken and Shrimp, and I'm rocking with Eileen Carter on A Good Life. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Gumbo Talk Thursday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK 1230 AM. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and hopefully everyone else. I say that, but I really do mean it. Like, I really, really do. And that's how the conversation started, because I wanted to go learn someone else's point of view. Because obviously, if they're that passionate, there is a connection. So I wanted to understand what that connection is. I am in the studio with none other than the Cindy Wynn. That's right. I am on the the line is none other than the Terry Guerin. And we have a special guest in the studio. We have Randy Chambliss of of NOLA Homes Project. Uh, He's in the studio. So I wanted him to give us a little blurb about exactly what's going on on Tuesday and the NOLA uh, 500 pro- 5,000 project. Yes. Yeah, look, let me not underestimate you. The 5,000 pro- project because that is also healing NOLA. Absolutely. One, I just want to say thank you for inviting me. I'm humbled and grateful to be here. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. You're my partner. Oh, thank talking you. talking about you stuck forever. You cousin. We cousins now. <laughs> 
So real quickly, uh, just like the topic you guys are speaking on right now, uh, education is one of the major pieces to everything, mm -hmm. whether yes. it's the history, the real estate education, and even mm -hmm. financing. Yes. And so what we're doing, we created a social cause by the name of Project 5000. And basically, the vision is to be able to provide an affordable, attainable financial and real estate education to 5,000 people across the country. And what that's going to do is empower 5,000 people to be able to get into position to buy their first home mm -hmm. and or start to invest in real estate mm -hmm. to generate cash flow. Mm -hmm. And so we know the financial education piece is not being taught in the school system and it's not being taught in a lot of our households because we don't know. All right. So when we get in a position where we could learn some information for free, like you mentioned. Free. Raise up those credit free? scores. Mm -hmm. Free. Free. Right? Okay, yeah. free. Let's make sure. We raise up those credit <laughs> scores. We show them how to lower their taxes legally, like Donald Trump. Yeah. Legally. Yeah. Right. Right. He has all the good yeah. info. Right. <laughs> Pay down our taxes, excuse me, pay down our debt, minimize our expenses. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, most people, most people have more bills at the end of the month than they do cash left over. Right. Mm -hmm. So we want to shift the mindset first. Yes. Then yes. shift the income. So now individuals have more cash left over at the end of the month than they do bills. And so wow. we're teaching two, everybody has two financial strategies or financial objectives they want to make. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first one is to be able to sustain the current lifestyle, which means mm -hmm. pay their bills on time right. and live, right? right? Right. And then the second is to be able to create and sustain a future lifestyle. At some point, we want to retire, or some people may not can't work because of an injury or, or just lost a job due to the economy. And so what are we doing now to create and sustain that future mm -hmm. lifestyle? Right. And so that's what basically we'll be doing May 23rd, like you mentioned. The doors open at 6.30, guys. 6.30. 6.30, the doors open. At 7 o'clock sharp, we're going to be professionals. We're starting on time. And uh, make sure you guys. <laughs> I said amen. That's right. so I appreciate sure you, that. That's right. <laughs> so make sure you guys actually come prepared to take some copious notes because I'm going to have a worksheet ready to go where we're going to be going over some strategies. And so they can register where? At myfinancialtrainingpro.com. That's the registration page, myfinancialtrainingpro.com. And if you go to any of my social media platforms, the link is there. If you just scroll, it's probably the second, the first or second post at this point. Um, just go and click on the, the, the website and all of the information is there and you just sign up and it's free. Did you hear me? Free. F-R-E-E. -E, free. But I think it's also the fact that you guys are also going to provide tools for, for participants, right? So not just yes. educating them. Because many times we go, I, I mean, I've been to Buku of Educational Workshops. <laughs> I you love think? Buku. Right. Right. I know I love her Buku. Yeah, right. <laughs> but then and many times, like, at the end of the workshop, it goes, okay, I get it with all these educational information, but then I'm still at the same I'm situation. I'm still lost. I'm right. still right. lost because I'm lost. That's why I'm here, and I'm still lost. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Right. And so right. I think that's one of the significance that you right. guys will come with tools yes. for the participants. We, we will literally have a worksheet there, mm -hmm. and individual will take notes. It's not going to be a lecture-type uh, strategy session is going to be more of a communication. So individuals need to be prepared to take copious notes, and when they walk out of there, they're going to have a tangible asset, a roadmap, a blueprint. Stuff people will. pay for. Right. <laughs> people, people, people pay for, right? Yes. So it's actually a roadmap that they could take, leave out, and go to work. It's an empowerment tool. Yes. And so yeah. the whole strategy behind it, people ask, well, why are y'all doing it for free? Well, at the end of the day, we're talking about economic development here. Mm -hmm. So when we, uh, quick story, uh, we're working on a project in New Orleans East of Rehab, and last Thursday I took a look and saw the project from a third-party standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I watched 15 tradesmen walk through that door, plumbers, wow. electricians, mm -hmm. carpenters, painters, mm -hmm. and I realized, excuse me, 20, I realized there's 20 men that's not committing crimes. That's 20 men that's feeding their family. Mm -hmm. And that's not to count the real estate service providers like right. our real estate agents, brokers, insurance agents, title companies, mm -hmm. all these other professionals that every time a house is brought back into commerce, it creates livable wage jobs. Mm -hmm. So livable wage jobs and business opportunity brings down the crime problem. Mm -hmm. So that's what our motivation is. Because who wants to go to jail when I'm making sixty, seventy thousand dollars 70000 That right? is. It right. doesn't make any sense. Right. So we could create jobs. And make sure they're sustainable, they're right. livable wage jobs, and now we can have an opportunity. We start to own our own land. Mm -hmm. So when we own our own land, we can create our own businesses on that land, right. and we can control our own resources. Which is the good life. Yeah. Exactly. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you for bringing your project to the east. 
Yeah. Like that was like the <laughs> biggest <laughs> highlight. You're welcome. <laughs> that was like the biggest highlight for me was that you're bringing it to the east, and and thank you very much for offering the your expertise to the community because many times I think in underserved community people come but then they come with a price tag, mm-hmm. right? And so you're coming with empowerment, with the tools, with the information. And then you're coming to the east. I can't emphasize that enough. <laughs> you know what? It goes to our conversation today with regards to labeling. Unfortunately, during or after Katrina, uh, the New Orleans East was labeled. I remember I I was in New Orleans East every weekend when I was growing mm. up. It was like the center of everything. Right. And right. I went to um, and it still is. Ursul- it is no, but I went. To, <laughs> I believe that. I went to Ursuline <laughs> in, in middle school, and there was people. It was my word for the day. If y'all been paying attention from earlier today, was diverse. New Orleans East was diverse. It had right. so many many different cultures it had people of every everything living in the east and so you know for us to kind of label it as one thing and not give the attention that it should be there you know it just makes us sad so we're very excited about randy chambliss and everything that nola holmes project is doing so how can they follow you and get more information about everything that you're doing sure uh one of the resources is facebook uh you can go to facebook.com forward slash and look us up underneath my real estate training pro my Real Estate Training Pro also You're going to be my Real Estate Training Pro. Yeah, that is. <laughs> <laughs> You're it. What you talking about? And also. I like to have people around me who's smarter than me. Like, you, that's, <laughs> that's your right. lane. I'm going to come to you. Hey, then that's where the community empowerment comes in. Yes. We're all bringing something to the table. Yes. Education. That's, Thank you. That's right. And exactly. so our online resource and tool is MyRealEstateTrainingPro.com. There's already free videos that's there. I actually recorded one of our home buying um, seminars. It's on the website myrealestatetrainingpro.com Open your mind to living differently in the world. Make sure you follow them because it is the good life. Um, I want to kind of merge this conversation and let, you know, Randy didn't know what he was getting into today, but I'm <laughs> pulling him into this, and Terry and Cindy be able to give their uh, their two cents and, you know, their feelings about what's going on in the city because, you know, it's something that we can, you know, stand back and, like, look at, but at some point we have to use our voice and we have to say mm-hmm. something. And we are all, and, and you're in education with regard to real estate. And this was something I wanted to educate myself on. And when I got some, you know, some information that was, you know, foundational, like this isn't just somebody random. This was a colonel from the U.S. Military Academy from West Point. And, I, you know, I don't care if you are a patriot. And I say that in quotation marks because I feel like a lot of people use that. Right. And, you know, to make America great again or however you want to use it. But it it has been um, – it has been – it has – coincided with hatred and so i really want to break that because we can be americans and not hateful correct Correct. and unfortunately it has it has done that i actually my my neighbor now is from england and so i asked her and she um, is a woman of color and so i asked her what you know where she's like i'm british she didn't say i'm african-american british she didn't say i'm black british she said i'm british and i think that's very interesting because we're the only people who label ourselves and create these divides that's right And we are doing that in New Orleans, and so I really would like to heal New Orleans. We want to heal New Orleans with regard to our pockets. We want to make sure we support NOLA Homes Project, but we want to heal with our hearts. We want to heal each other with our hearts. And this this statue controversy, you know, it's okay to not understand where the foundation has come from, but it's not okay to remain ignorant. Mm-hmm. So at right. the, the Good Life right. Radio Show, I want to give you the information. You can make whatever decision you want. I'm not trying to put you on any path, but I want to get you the correct information, and that's what we did today. Well, my heart is, is extremely heavy for the past few weeks just watching the news, seeing both sides. And so I am so glad, Aline, that you're sharing the facts because, I mean, as I was listening to the sergeant, right, mm-hmm. um, I've learned, and I want to hear it again because mm-hmm. I'm, the first time is not it hasn't. All right, right we'll play so it again. Gotta, so I'm very <laughs> glad that you're going to be playing that, and so I am going to continue to learn and and find out about the facts. But my heart is extremely heavy, Absolutely. very heavy. Um, Lee, so, you want to be nice and, and let me go to and take up my commercials. He's nice. And can we play it again? It's five minutes. Absolutely. But here's the deal, folks. <laughs> we need to find a way to have folks to listen to this link. To hear this guy speak because yes. this is important stuff, yes. and you know, the 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 craziness that's going on out there is is embarrassing for the city. It, really it is. is. Mm-hmm. It's it is embarrassing mm-hmm. because and, yes. people want us to go back to what we had in slavery, and I can't tell you that I know that's what it's all about at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Okay, yes. they want us to be sub- submissive to them, and I, you know, 
oh, I cringed listening to this. We need to have everybody listen to this. Not, I mean, 24-7 almost. Yeah. Okay. That's right. And, and the thing is, one of the things that I learned in life, like the young lady just mentioned, is repetition. You know, the only way you can create a belief, you have to hear something over oh, and okay. over and yeah. over again. Yeah. So right. what you're doing, Eileen, is having that, that video segment played over and over again because now people, they start to pick up something that they missed the last time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yep. hopefully we start to change that mindset because yes. everything starts with the mindset. Everything starts yeah, with the can. mindset. Yeah. So hopefully, Leo, just let me cut my commercials out. I'll play double tomorrow. Lee. But <laughs> I, I want to make sure that we hear this again. And, and what's, so, what's so crazy is that New Orleans is built on our service industry, yes. which is so diverse. Correct. People come to this city for our culture, which is so diverse. And we have these statues that are emulating something that is the exact opposite. Right. So let's understand that it's our cognitive dissonance. It is the discomfort. But when we are able to walk through that discomfort, that fear, there is goodness. There is love. There is understanding. There is compassion. There is tolerance on the other side. So we're going to play it one more time. Thank you, Lee. And we're Was out, Was the American Civil War fought because of slavery? More than 150 years later, this remains a controversial question. Why? Because many people don't want to believe that the citizens of the southern states were willing to fight and die to preserve a morally repugnant institution. There has to be another reason, we are told. Well, there isn't. The evidence is clear and overwhelming. Slavery was, by a wide margin, the single most important cause of the Civil War for both sides. Before the presidential election of 1860, a South Carolina newspaper warned that the issue before the country was the extinction of slavery and called on all who were not prepared to surrender the institution to act. Shortly after Abraham Lincoln's victory, they did. The secession documents of every southern state made clear, crystal clear, that they were leaving the Union in order to protect their peculiar institution of slavery a phrase that at the time meant the thing special to them. The vote to secede was 169 to 0 in South Carolina, 166 to 7 in Texas, 84 to 15 in Mississippi. In no southern state was the vote close. Alexander Stevens of Georgia, the Confederacy's vice president, clearly articulated the views of the South in March 1861. Our new government, he said, was founded on slavery. Its foundations are laid. Its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, submission to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. Yet despite the evidence, many continue to argue that other factors superseded slavery as the cause of the Civil War. Some argue that the South only wanted to protect states' rights, But this raises an obvious question. The state's rights to what? Wasn't it to maintain and spread slavery? Moreover, states' rights was not an exclusive Southern issue. All the states, North and South, sought to protect their rights. Sometimes they petitioned the federal government. Sometimes they quarreled with each other. In fact, Mississippians complained that New York had too strong a concept of states' rights because it would not allow Delta planters to bring their slaves to Manhattan. The South was preoccupied with states' rights because it was preoccupied first and foremost with retaining slavery. Some argue that the cause of the war was economic. The North was industrial and the South agrarian. And so the two lived in such economically different societies that they could no longer stay together. Not true. In the middle of the 19th century, both North and South were agrarian societies. In fact, the North produced far more food crops than did the South. But Northern farmers had to pay their farmhands, who were free to come and go as they pleased, while Southern plantation owners exploited slaves over whom they had total control. And it wasn't just plantation owners who supported slavery. The slave society was embraced by all classes in the South. The rich had multiple motivations for wanting to maintain slavery. But so did the poor, non-slaveholding whites. The peculiar institution ensured that they did not fall to the bottom rung of the social ladder. That's why another argument, 
that the Civil War couldn't have been about slavery because so few people owned slaves has little merit. Finally, many have argued that President Abraham Lincoln fought the war to keep the Union together, not to end slavery. That was true at the outset of the war, but he did so with the clear knowledge that keeping the Union together meant either spreading slavery to all the states, an unacceptable solution, or vanquishing it altogether. In a famous campaign speech in 1858, Lincoln said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. What was it that divided the country? It was slavery and only slavery. He continued, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. It will become all one thing or all the other. Lincoln's view never changed, and as the war progressed, the moral component, ending slavery, became more and more fixed in his mind. His Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 turned that into law. Slavery is the great shame of America's history. No one denies that. But it's to America's everlasting credit that it fought the most devastating war in its history in order to abolish slavery. As a soldier, I am proud that the United States Army, my army, defeated the Confederates. In its finest hour, soldiers wearing this blue uniform, almost 200,000 of them, former slaves themselves, destroyed chattel slavery, freed four million men, women, and children from human bondage, and saved the United States of America. I'm Colonel Ty Sigley, Professor and Head, Department of History at the United States Military Academy, West Point, for Prager University.